So joining me now is national political reporter for Real Clear Politics, Caitlin Huey Burns, and from Washington, CBS News senior political editor, Steve Chigaris. We're going to talk all things politics, and we're going to start uh, with you, Caitlin. We're going to, we are going to talk about Hillary Clinton, but we've got to mm -hmm. talk about Donald Trump because, and this idea of softening on immigration. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, he makes this hardline speech about immigration, in mm -hmm. fact, almost offending some people, mm -hmm. and then he gets on the radio following that, and he uses the word softening his mm -hmm. position. Is this strategy or is this back to, you know, Donald Trump going off script? What's going on? I think it's, it's a combination of a few things. Remember, you had Kellyanne Conway, the campaign manager, encouraging Donald Trump to take a uh, different kind of approach, uh, reaching out to different kind of demographic groups, uh, broadening the base of support. Uh, he had that event in Mexico, which many thought were uh, was successful. Um, many of members that of his Hispanic uh, council mm -hmm. thought that was an effective message. Cross the border. Uh, gave this hardline speech, uh, which many thought uh, was uh, on the issue of deportation, whether he softened or hardened or whether he believes he softened or hardened, uh, he made clear the language and rhetoric and tone about deportation really angered a lot of these folks mm -hmm. and frustrated them. And so what I think you're seeing is this idea of, you know, Trump is trying to uh, really rally his base, keep his base of support there, um, while also uh, again trying to 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 show that he's expanding in some way, um, but I think you can take from his speech on uh, Wednesday or Wednesday night that this was the this is his approach. I mean, it is a hard line approach. To That's immigration. the real Donald Trump right there. Right. All right. Well, Steve, you know, after that speech, uh, we got reports of some of his Hispanic uh, advisors, some of his surrogates, uh, withdrawing their support, some quitting. Um, do you think this was the expected? outcome of the speech in Arizona. I don't think we should be surprised uh, by this outcome. Uh, you know, this is what Republican leaders were predicting after Mitt Romney only got 27 percent of the uh, Hispanic vote in the 2012 election. They said it's language uh, that he used really talking about immigration that turned off Hispanic voters. And so not surprising that this is, these Hispanics that supported Trump are reconsidering or even just walking out on the guy. He took, as, as Caitlin pointed out, rightly, one of the, the hardest lines you can take on immigration. Uh, and I think really what he was doing in terms of the, the reframing of immigration, he wasn't speaking to Hispanic voters. He's speaking to suburban white voters and, and framing the immigration argument in, uh, in, uh, under the uh, umbrella of a crime, uh, getting rid of the criminal element, and really sort of uh, talking to suburban white voters. He, tr he trotted out about uh, 10 parents, um, all white, uh, of people who uh, had lost uh, a, a, a son or a daughter to uh, to an illegal immigrant who killed them, and it was clear what he was trying to do there. He's trying to sort of strike fear in uh, some of the electorate to say this immigration problem is a crime problem. It's not just about uh, illegal immigration, and so that's not a, a message you're taking to Hispanic voters. That's a message I think he's taking to other voters. Whether it'll work or not remains to be seen. Right. So, so to that uh, that end, there, uh, Caitlin, you know, his outreach to uh, the African American community that has been a mm -hmm. big. Issue. So now he's going to be speaking at an African American church in Detroit. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, he's having sort of a one on one interview with the pastor, and we're mm -hmm. hearing, at least the New York Times is reporting, that it's uh, heavily vetted in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the questions were submitted, the answers are written out. Mm -hmm. um, he was, I believe, sort of cajoled into finally speaking to the actual members of the church because he wasn't planning mm -hmm. on doing that at all. So, mm -hmm. to what Steve had to say, do you think this is an, a sincere attempt at reaching out to the African American? community or is he also speaking to say an alternate audience out there right I think that's it's an alternate audience is is, is the goal here uh, he has been talking uh, to about African Americans to largely white audiences in various different states we've seen those speeches over the few weeks uh, and and has been criticized really for doing that and not actually going into uh, African American communities and actually doing the outreach and so you know this strategy is certainly geared towards uh, white voters, uh, re traditional Republicans who have voted for Republican candidates for decades, uh, who don't like uh, Donald Trump's tone and approach and rhetoric. And this is an attempt to say, look, I'm, I'm making this appeal, I'm broadening my support, I'm, I'm doing this and making the Republican Party more inclusive and so forth. Uh, he's not going to, you know, no one expects him to do better than even Romney did among African Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, again, we're you know 60 something days away from the election. This kind of outreach is just starting, mm -hmm. uh, and so I think this is certainly you know the broader goal is is to shore up his own uh, party. Those edu educated suburbanites mm -hmm. who are still a little uncomfortable with right. some of the negative things they say about Donald Trump, who are right. perhaps scared. Which brings me to uh, this latest yeah. poll. Uh, let me just tell you about this poll, and Steve, I want to talk to you about it. Um, it's a new poll from USA Today and Suffolk uh, University, and it shows that supporters of both candidates are more motivated by fear of the other candidate than actual excitement about the person that they are supporting. Got the numbers right there. Among Trump supporters, 80% say they're scared of Hillary Clinton. Among Clinton supporters, 62% say they're scared of Donald Trump. Steve, what does this say about the state of the current electorate? It says more about the candidates than the electorate, I think. I mean, really, you're talking about two candidates who have extremely high unfavorable numbers, historically high unfavorable numbers at this point for presidential nominees. Uh, and you're seeing the electorate really on each side energized against the other candidate, as you showed in that, in, in that graphic. Eighty percent of Trump supporters are voting for him because they're scared of her. What does that say? That says that they're energized to vote against Hillary Clinton. Sixty-two percent uh, on, on the Clinton side because of Trump. Trump, again, energized to vote for her against him. This is really what we're seeing, too, in the messages. We're seeing a lot of negative campaigning between the two candidates, trying to bring the other one down because they know that voters right now are listening to these negative, uh, these negative messages, mainly because they're voting against the other person. Yeah, right. Um, just more, one more quick question. We've got to talk about um, Hillary Clinton before we go, right, Caitlin? Mm -hmm. So, uh, listen, uh, the, uh, they're going to be releasing, uh, the Associated Press is reporting that Clinton's schedule, minute-by-minute minute schedule as Secretary of State, is going to be released. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think her opponents are going to do with that information? Oh, I think they're going to be parsing through that, looking for uh, similarities or drawing some, some, you know, looking at the schedule, looking at uh, the meetings that she had, looking at the donor list, um, and, and that sort of thing, kind of tracing things together and putting things together if they can. Um, the, the Clinton campaign, of course, has, has, has denied that there's anything there. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what this looks like. Uh, but this is just Oh, bro more broadly shows that this this whole entire thing is kind of a drip 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 uh, continues to kind of linger over um, and the calculation I mean to the point that you may we just were talking about each are making this a referendum on the other and this kind of underscores why yep Caitlin Huey birds and Steve Chigaris thank you so much guys thanks, thanks.